I must disagree with my esteemed <laughs> colleague here. Okay. Except First for the of all, part. let me say yeah. that <laughs> science is the engine of prosperity. From steam power to electricity to the laser to the transistor <coughs> to the computer. That's not true. We're That's talking technology. about. Hey, mate, technology. hey, can I have my, can sure. I have my <laughs> say? Okay. Sure. You had your say. Let yeah. me have my say. Yes. However, the information revolution has a weakness, and the weakness is precisely the educational system. The United States has the worst educational system known to science. Our graduates compete regularly at the level of third world countries. So how come the scientific establishment of the United States doesn't collapse? If we're producing uh, a generation of dummies, if the stupid index of America keeps rising every year, just watch network television and reality shows, right? How come the scientific establishment of the United States doesn't collapse? Let me tell you something. Some of you may not know this. America has a secret weapon. That secret weapon is the H-1B. Without the H-1B, the scientific establishment of this country would collapse. Forget about Google. Forget about Silicon Valley. There would be no Silicon Valley without, without the H-1B. And you know what the H-1B is? It's the genius visa, OK? You realize that in the United States, 50% of all PhD candidates are foreign born. At my system, one of the biggest in the United States, 100% of the PhD candidates are foreign born. The United States is a magnet sucking up all the brains of the world, but now the brains are going back. Right. They're going back to China. They're going back to India. And people are saying, oh my god, there's a Silicon Valley in India now. Oh my god, there's a Silicon Valley in China. Duh. Where did it come from? It came from the United States. So don't tell me that science isn't the engine of prosperity. You remove the H-1B visa, and you collapse the economy. In Wall Street Journal, editorialized against a congressman who wanted to ban the H-1B, saying they'll take jobs away from the American people. The Wall Street Journal said, look, there are no Americans who can take these jobs. These are at the highest level of high technology. They don't take away jobs from Americans. They create entire industries. We, and so that's why we have an Achilles heel, and that's the educational system. The and again, irony, sociology irony, majors irony is, are not necessarily going to be the ones determining the future of Silicon Valley. The, I, but physicists, okay. the engineers, irony, the, we need more of them, not less. The irony is, the irony is, The irony is, I, I agree with the immigration issues that what you're saying, uh, and I'm at a school, of course, and Peter's a graduate of a school where, where indeed immigration. Your school issues. wouldn't exist without the H-1B. Of course, of course. But I, but I'm We've not. We've got to get back to the future not, of business. But hold on a second. Yeah. I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm not arguing against an H, an H-1B. I, I completely a, a, a agree with this issue, and, and the point on the future of business that he's making, which is very, very important, is the nature of human capital. What is misunderstood here is again how poorly run schools are. MIT is a notable exception in this regard. His school, his school, his school is not. Because what happens is they, they run in these introductory science and engineering classes at Illinois and Wisconsin and Michigan. They run freshman and sophomore years as flunk out operations. They, 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 they do it to, they, they run it as a boot camp. And then people are surprised that people don't take science, that they don't take the STEM courses. The point that I'm trying to make, which, is, which I think is, a, is an important one in this regard, is that the way educational systems are set up right now is that we have distorted incentives that undermine the ability for America to have a homegrown uh, science and technology. All right, what'd you get for the sum when you added? Jerry Cummings, a 27-year veteran math teacher, feels betrayed. She and all her colleagues at the Tewksbury Public Schools were fired before the beginning of the school year, then offered their jobs back at reduced pay. Come on, everybody, let's go. I felt truly wounded. So there was just this horrible atmosphere in the building. To think that people who work so hard at our profession and for children, it was devastating. The notice said, your full-time position as a teacher in the Tewksbury Public Schools will be eliminated and likely replaced by a part-time, 90% position. A slap in the face, say the teachers. Don't insult me and call me a part-time worker. Call me a full-time worker who's working at reduced pay. 
Tewksbury School District, like many, has faced persistent budget deficits. The town has cut three dozen teachers in recent years. That's 10% of its educators. And the school district has eliminated art, music, and other classes. This year, the school district said, enough. All teachers will have to share in the pain. Good job, Sean. The pain ended up being a 5, not 10% cut in salary, and a supposed 5% cut in workload. Teachers at the middle school were told to arrive just one minute before their first class and stay no more than 10 minutes after the final bell. Where is your division? Yet even the outgoing school committee chair, who led the salary-cutting move, concedes teachers put in a longer day. I would think as professionals, uh, teachers as in any profession would stay for as long as it took to get the job done. Parents like Laura Hume are upset at how the teachers were treated and the implications for her three children. What's going to end up happening if they don't have the teachers to help them out and what have you, they're going to end up falling through the cracks. Though Tamara Ward, mother to an eighth grader, says teachers have to face economic reality. A lot of people are losing their jobs. A lot of people are taking pay cuts. In this economy, they needed to just suck it up a little bit. The school committee says the 5% cut is slated to be restored to the teachers this summer. But the Tewksbury Public Schools are facing yet another budget deficit. So teachers like Jerry Cummings are distrustful, wondering if they'll have to make new sacrifices in the coming school year. Alan Chernoff, CNN, Tewksbury, Massachusetts.